four, three, two, one. Welcome to the fourth annual Demped March Madness. In 2017, four, three, Demped two, delivered one. results across Welcome all eight wards. I've always said that my March three goals Madness. are affordable housing, tax revenue, and jobs. Over one-third of a billion dollars invested from the Housing Production Trust Fund, the largest trust fund of its kind in the nation, sparking the creation or preservation of more than 10,500 affordable units, with another 2,800 units in pre-construction. 2017 was a big year for delivering public benefits with city land through public-private partnerships from Walter Reed to West End. The wharf officially opened in 2017 with 3.2 million square feet of mixed use space. The largest waterfront development in the nation, the wharf is the first significant redevelopment in Southwest DC in more than 50 years. We celebrated the topping off of the entertainment and sports arena, signifying that the 4,200-seat arena and training facility has reached its final construction height. At Audi Field on January 26th, less than a year after breaking ground, we gathered with DC United fans, partners, and construction crew members at the site of the Black and Red's new home to commemorate the topping off ceremony. This signals the completion of another construction milestone as the DC United moves closer to opening their new state-of-the-art home on July 14, 2018. Dimped's business development team has had an active year, focusing on business attraction, specifically for innovation and technology industries, continuing to grow the Great Streets program, implementing our economic development strategy, and launching DC's first inclusive innovation incubator. DC is also number one for women in tech. The nation's capital submitted its bid to be the location for Amazon's second headquarters last fall, and we are excited to be on the short list for the Amazon HQ2 search. What's next, DC? What are we gonna deliver now? How's everybody doing? That is fairly pathetic for such an awesome venue. How is everybody doing? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Brian Kenner. I am the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> and welcome to the fourth annual March Madness event here at the Wharf. Uh, events like this obviously do not happen without a tremendous amount of support uh, to make them successful. So I very much want to start with just a few thank yous. Uh, thank you to all the people at the Anthem uh, for allowing us to have this beautiful space. Uh, thank you to all the members of the Deputy Mayor's uh, office who helped to put today on, and that includes Jessica Carroll, Kate Hardig, uh, David, Hauer, uh, David Howard, uh, Brittany, Gordine, uh, so many people that have been instrumental in making sure that today uh, is a success. I also see lots of agency directors. Uh, if all the agency directors for DC government could raise their hand and give them just a quick round of applause. I see Office of Planning, I see Film and Television Music, I see Arts and Humanities and a few others. Um, we, they really work hard every day to make sure that we are successful here. Um, I, was, I was talking to somebody a few, a few months ago, and they said to me, <clears throat> uh, Brian, when is, uh, so are you going to have another March Madness? And the thing that struck me is that because we've started to make this so regular, people are referring to March Madness as a real estate event, as a, as a CBE opportunity, as a chance for people to be able to get jobs, for small businesses to be able to get work. 
It's not even so much a basketball uh, reference anymore here in Washington, D.C. But while we're talking about basketball, um, did anybody have the University of Maryland, Baltimore County getting past the first round? How many, round of applause. Yes, that was the point zero 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 two five percent of people who had that. Um, how many people had Villanova in the final four? Okay, how many people had Michigan in the final four? How many people had, I go, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, Kansas in the final four? Now, how many people had Loyola of Chicago? No, nobody had them in the final four? That ruined everybody's bracket, okay. Um, you know, I, I think that, that obviously uh, March Madness, from our perspective, is is much more than just a reference. It really is an opportunity for people to be able to network, people to be able to meet other people, and most importantly, an opportunity for the city to talk a little bit about all of the opportunities that we have coming up. Uh, we know that it helps when there's regularity to our process. We know that if you can expect to know when projects are going to come out, it makes it easier for you all to be able to fulfill so many of the needs that we have. Again, just let's, let's just see who else is here in the house today. Uh, if you are a contractor, round of applause if you're a contractor. Few, okay. Architects? Few architects, that's great. Uh, consultants, just regular consultants? Some? How about entrepreneurs? How about entrepreneurs here? Okay. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Uh, as you probably saw when you came in, there are some boards uh, there where you can get a much better sense about who actually is here. Uh, we also obviously both before this event uh, had some great networking and even after this event we'll continue to have some networking uh, that people can take advantage of. Um, you know, I think that at one time even uh, a project like what we're sitting in today would have been a part of March Madness. We are sitting right now uh, in the anthem which is on the wharf, uh, which we just opened in October of last year. And it is really uh, the result of many of the opportunities that you're about to see uh, here over the next few minutes. This is what they can become. This is why we do them. We do them because they are transformational, uh, potentially to neighborhoods. They provide needed housing, in particular affordable housing in the District of Columbia. And they provide job opportunities. Uh, many of which benefit uh, people who live here uh, in the District of Columbia. Uh, as people probably know, I got three jobs, right? I got three things that I'm supposed to be focused on. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to say that as it relates to affordable housing, jobs, and tax revenue, um, we have been successful uh, in the Bowser administration over the last couple of years. We have increased tax revenue by over a billion dollars uh, over the last three to five years. And that's telling, especially if you go to Maryland and Virginia, where that may not be as prevalent. Uh, I think that speaks to the vitality of the district's um, economy. We have been able to spark somewhere north of 10,000 units of affordable housing uh, here in the District of Columbia. And we have been able to get tens of thousands of new jobs uh, for D.C. residents here. Um, again, speaks to how important uh, opportunities like this are and the reason why we have March Madness. Now, keeping in that sort of basketball reference, you know, everybody need, every team needs a coach, right? Every team needs a coach. And I am very happy to say that uh, our leader, uh, Mayor Muriel Bowser, has been instrumental in making sure that we stay focused on the things that Washington, D.C. and D.C. residents need to be successful. So uh, without any further ado, I would like to welcome up Coach Mayor Muriel Bowser. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to March Madness. And please don't ask me anything about basketball. Uh, what I'm here to talk about is opportunities for Washington, D.C. Uh, and I'm so glad that so many of you have joined us for the fourth straight year to talk about how the government can work with you uh, to create jobs for D.C. residents, housing for D.C. residents, and increased opportunities for small businesses in the District of Columbia. I do want to pause and say how grateful I am to Deputy Mayor Brian Kenner and the great DEMPED team. Let's give them a big round of applause. 
Brian uh, has attacked his three jobs with great vigor, and he has told you uh, how successful we have been over the last three years in increasing revenue for our city, which allows us to make the types of investments in our residents that are paying significant dividends. We have made unprecedented investments with your support and help in your big ideas in affordable housing for Washington, D.C. And because we have been able to be more efficient and to be more predictable, we know in the next five years we will be able to create even more units of affordable housing for our residents. But we know if all of Washington, D.C. is going to have access to the middle class and the opportunity to raise their families here, we also have to focus on how we create more jobs for D.C. residents that have good wages so that they can afford a great quality of life in Washington, D.C. We are also very proud of what we've been able to do to increase small business spending in the District of Columbia. I hope all of you know about the Green Book. Who knows about the Green Book? Fantastic, uh, because what the Green Book represents is our commitment uh, to making sure you know about all of the opportunities available in each one of our agencies in advance, so that if you want to work with Washington, D.C., you can make sure that you're focused on the opportunities um, that we will have in the upcoming year. So over the last three years, we have been able to increase our spending with small businesses, uh, and we're going to think I hit, uh, we're going to hit, I think, $750 million this year, and we know in a very short period of time moving forward, we'll hit a billion dollars worth of small business spending uh, in the District of Columbia. So one thing I love, love, love about March Madness is that you get to hear from the directors who have opportunities in the upcoming year. And when we look back on uh, just a few years, uh, we know that all of the things that we put in front of you are now moving. Uh, we are very fortunate in our area to have outstanding um, people who do construction, outstanding architectural professionals. Uh, we have have wonderful small and emerging businesses that are focused on everything from sustainable design uh, to the environment and how we can build our buildings more efficiently to looking at how we design our public spaces so that they invite our residents in while keeping them safe as they have access to our great uh, opportunities across the city. Uh, so it's very, very important that you're here to partner with us. I say frequently that the government can do a lot, but we can do so much more with wonderful private sector partners. Uh, and just this year alone, uh, we are going to be able to open some of the projects that we have been talking to you about uh, in the last several years. Uh, and when we put the flag down today, we know back, we know that in a few years from now, uh, we'll be opening these wonderful opportunities for DC residents. So enjoy March Madness. Uh, keep going after opportunities in the district and keep making us proud. Have a great day, everybody. Mayor, thank you. Uh, we're going to keep this show rolling. And so uh, without any further ado, we're going to invite up uh, the director of real estate uh, for the deputy mayor's office for planning and economic development to talk about uh, the new opportunities that DEMPED has, Sarosh Opadwala. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Kenner. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us here today. I echo our Deputy Mayor's enthusiasm about the progress we have made and what we have delivered for the residents of the District of Columbia. And it's in no small part to our March Madness events and your partnerships on our projects. Three years ago, I stood before this audience for the first March Madness to preview development projects. And this year, we are keeping the momentum going. This year, we have four project sites. Together, these parcels represent almost seven acres of land and over one million square feet of development potential. As we have done on all of our projects since 2015, residential projects will require at least one-third of the units be affordable with rental units at, at or below 30 and 50% AMI, area median income. 
At DEMPED, we prioritize affordable housing, and you continue to help us do that. Thank you. Likewise, together we have moved projects both big and small to the benefit of communities all over the city, in all eight wards. This year is a big year. It is the year of the Anacostia, and three of our four projects are east of the Anacostia River. We are focusing on expanding inclusive prosperity and affordable housing to underserved areas in the district, particularly for longtime residents of Washington, D.C. We begin with St. Elizabeth's East, Parcel 15. DEMPED recently closed on the first phase for St. Elizabeth's. We will, we will be completing almost $80 million in infrastructure work this fall, and we will soon be opening the entertainment and sports arena. With that incredible progress comes an, comes an opportunity to do more, and we are on to the next phases of this important community project. Parcel 15 is located on the southern portion of the historic campus. It is a four-acre lot located directly west of the Congress Heights Metro Station and adjacent to the new Entertainment and Sports Arena. There will be a temporary surface parking lot on the site until a development plan is in place. The zoning is by right. The site can accommodate up to 400,000 square feet of retail and commercial uses. Redevelopment of this parcel should encourage pedestrian traffic and activity, particularly with ground floor retail. This RFP will be out in April of 2018. Next we have Eden Place Phase 2. This is another project where DEMPED is moving to the second phase. We completed the first phase of Eden Place in 2017. Eden Place Phase 2 is comprised of contiguous lots totaling approximately 18,000 square feet. The site has frontage on Dick Street and is on the eastern edge of the beautiful Deanwood neighborhood. The site is currently a surface lot zoned MU4 and can be redeveloped by right as a moderate density mixed use development. This RFP will be released in May of 2018. Our third project is at Howard Road and Shannon Place Southeast. This is a well located residential site directly across the street from the Anacostia Metro Station. This site has great frontage on a residential cul-de-sac across from the Savoy Elementary School. This project will be within walking distance of the Barry Farm Recreational Center, which includes a gym, workout facilities, and an in indoor aquatic center. Currently, it is a vacant parcel of land zoned RA1, which will permit moderately sized urban residential development. This RFP will be released in May of 2018. Finally, we have 2 Patterson Street Northeast. 2 Patterson Street is located just blocks from the Noma Metro Station in the Northwest One neighborhood. This corner parcel is, over, is, is just over one acre, fronts on North Capitol Street, and it is currently a surface parking lot. The site is zoned D5, which includes high-density commercial and mixed-use development, such as retail, housing, office, or hotel. This RFP will be released in, in June of 2018. More information on these projects will be available on our website, demped.dc.gov. We look forward to continuing to work with all of you and our agency partners on development in Washington, D.C. With that, I would like to transition to our next speaker, Polly Donaldson, Director of the Department of Housing and Community Development, to tell you about solicitation opportunities in her department. Please help me welcome Director Donaldson. Well, good morning. good morning. Good morning. I'm Polly Donaldson, Director of the Department. Thank you, uh, Saroche, very much for introducing me, Director of the Department of Housing and Community Development. And it is so great to be here for the fourth straight year at DEMPED's March Madness event. Every day, our team of 170 employees follows Mayor Bowser's game plan of producing and preserving opportunities for affordable housing and economic development and revitalizing underserved communities in the District of Columbia. We've had a winning record this past year, some of which include successfully managing the mayor's unprecedented investment of $100 million each year in the Housing Production Trust Fund, including this year's FY19 budget. And we beat the odds by 
committing in 2017 a historic $138.5 million in projects out the door by DHCD. Yeah. But that's not all. In addition, we moved quickly on implementing the key housing preservation strike force recommendations, including hiring Anna Van Balen as the first ever housing preservation officer and selecting capital impact partners and List DC to manage and leverage our $10 million public private preservation fund to a projected $40 million. And issuing draft regulations under the District Opportunity to Purchase Act, DOPA, after an almost nine-year wait. And in home ownership, we gave more residents home purchasing power by increasing down payment assistance in the HPAP program. And thanks to the mayor's leadership, DHCD got to the final four in the world of housing policy last year. We competed against Boston, Denver, and New York City for the Urban Land Institute's Larson Housing Policy Award. In the end, we were able to cut down the net as winners of this prestigious award in September. Now, I know you all remember that when I came before you last year, I committed that citywide, by the end of 2017, every vacant and blighted property in our inventory would be in the process of transformation into affordable housing and mixed-use communities. Well, we kept our promise to the mayor to, and to the residents of the district who live near these properties. By the fall of 2017, half of our sites were in some form of disposition. And then in December 2017, we launched a five-point action plan, Vacant to Vibrant DC, to transform the balance of our portfolio into vibrant and productive solutions, such as workforce housing and creative green and play space, and to spur economic development. I'll outline the action points briefly. Action number one was to auction off to gain affordability of our 33 properties. Action two, supporting small business to spur home ownership. Action three, building homes through DC Housing Finance Agency's housing investment platform. Action four, expanding green space through a partnership with KC Trees. Action five, seeing a tiny house in action, a demonstration project in partnership with the DC Students Construction Trades Foundation. And I'm pleased to report we've been moving aggressively to implement each one of these actions. In January, with the help of the Alex Cooper auctioneers, we auctioned off 33 sites that will be redeveloped into workforce housing. And earlier this month, the mayor announced the 20 winning bidders. And you can find that information on our website, dhcd.dc.gov. Our goal is to close on all properties by the summer, this summer, 2018, so that new workforce housing is available for residents by the middle of next year. Regarding action number three, DCHFA's HIP selected H2 design build and HEP construction as the final developer partners that will build workforce housing on two sites in Ward 6 and Ward 8. Later this spring, you'll hear more about our green space and tiny home projects. But right now, I want to tell you about the upcoming solicitation for action, uh, for action two, under which certified business enterprises can bid on contracts to renovate sites into affordable housing. We will release CBE solicitations for two sites during the week of April 16th at 2805 4th Street Northeast and at 2412 Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue Southeast. In closing, I want to thank Team DC. Many of them are here today. Please raise your hand if you're with Team DC, DHCD, and particularly our PAD, DFD, and legal teams for their hard work on behalf of district residents to make their desires of transforming vacant and blighted sites finally come true. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce Jeff Marudian, with, who's the director of the DC Department of Transportation. Thank you all very much. All right, good morning, everybody. 
Thank you so much, Director Donaldson. I want to uh, take the opportunity to thank our mayor, Mayor Bowser, uh, Deputy Mayor Kenner and his team for organizing this great event and for giving us the opportunity to come here and showcase our projects. This is my first March Madness event, and I'm very excited to be here with all of you. Again, my name is Jeff Marudian. I am the director of the District Department of Transportation, uh, and we are the department under the mayor's leadership that has been keenly focused on building and modernizing our city's infrastructure. We are responsible for roads and bridges, sidewalks, alleys, street lights, traffic signals, even our urban tree canopy. We have nearly 1,000 employees, and we deliver hundreds of millions of dollars worth of projects every single year. Let me say that again. We deliver hundreds of millions of dollars of projects every single year. And what that means for all of you uh, and for our community is opportunity, an opportunity to help us deliver on time and on budget some of these great projects. Most of you have no doubt heard about a little bridge project we currently have going not too far away from here. And of course, I am, I'm jokingly, of course, referring to the replacement of the historic Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge, the largest construction project in the history of DDOT. And you could see behind me a, a picture of what that bridge uh, will look like. Uh, and under the mayor's leadership, with the mayor, just last month we broke ground uh, on this historic project, and the work is currently underway. I want to talk a little bit about the project and what some of the opportunities are right now uh, for all of you to, to participate. The South Capitol Bridge Builders submitted an incredible design, as you could see, uh, and more than $40 million of subcontracts have already been committed. The three-span structure will be designed and constructed with state-of-the-art technology and materials designed to ensure durability and low maintenance for the more than 100-year design service life of the bridge. Substantial completion of this project is expected in 2021. And I'd like to specifically talk just for a moment about the DBE goal for this project. The contractor will subcontract at least 13% of the total contract value for design services and nearly 22% of the total contract value for construction services to certify DBEs. And so what that sounds like is a real opportunity. And here's one way for all of you to get involved. Just this week, two days from now, uh, we will be hosting a DBE open house scheduled for this Thursday from 10 a.m. to noon. The details are here. You could also visit uh, our booth in the back for more specific information. Uh, but if you are a company or if you know of a company that does concrete flat work, pavement demolition, milling, wet utilities, water and sewer lines, guardrail installations, and removal, this is an event that you don't want to miss. Again, that's this Thursday, March 29th from 10 a.m. to noon at the Cedar Tree Academy, located at 701 Howard Road, Southeast. If you visit our table, you can learn much more about some of the projects that we have also in our pipeline. I would also encourage you to visit our website for our project forecast to learn more about some of the work that we have upcoming. We are grateful for the opportunity to be here and to partner with all of you. I want to again thank DEMPED for the opportunity to be here. And it is now my great pleasure to introduce Ella Faulkner, who is the Director of Capital Planning and Design at the Department of Parks and Recreation. Good morning. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you to Mayor Bowser. Thank you, thank you, Deputy Kenner. Welcome, everyone. My name is Ella Faulkner, Director of Capital Planning and Design with the Department of Parks and Recreation. And I'm excited for you guys to be here. Um, DPR is one of the largest landowners in the district with more than 900 acres of green space, 375 parks, 95 playgrounds, 76 recreation facilities and over 50 aquatic facilities and features. Our agency has direct and lasting impacts on every age group and our spaces provide significant social value to residents across the district. DPR is working with our sister agency, the Department of General Services, to create exciting opportunities for those of you in attendance today. We have many upcoming projects, but I'd like to briefly highlight three of those today. The first one is the Stead Recreation Center, located at 1625 P Street Northwest. Uh, it's about two blocks east of DuPont Circle. The total budget is $10 million. 
and we are working currently with Outerbridge Horsey Architects on design developments. DGS, on behalf of DPR, will be issuing an RFP for a general contractor October of 2018. The existing historic carriage house will undergo a modernization and expansion. Our plans include the renovation of the existing carriage house and addition of a new net zero energy annex that will provide flexible indoor athletic space and multi-purpose rooms, teaching kitchen, and DPR's largest rooftop urban farm. The project will also incorporate park improvements, including a new playground and DPR's first solar canopy-covered basketball court. The second project is the Fort Lincoln and Theodore Hagen's Recreation Center. Both are located in Ward 5, just north of New York and South Dakota Avenue. The total project budget is $18 million. DGS, on behalf of DPR, will be issuing an RFP for architectural services July of 2018. The small facility was built in 1978 and no longer meets the needs of the Fort Lincoln ever-expanding community. The architects will conduct working sessions with community stakeholders in order to design a new state-of-the-art facility. In addition, the design team will be tasked to plan updates and improvements to the 17-acre park space, which will include a new playground, courts, picnic areas, gazebos, athletic fields, and passive green space. And the last project we'd like to highlight is the Therapeutic Recreation Center. DPR is very excited about this project. It provides numerous adaptive programs and activities for persons with disabilities, most of which occur at the DPR Therapeutic Recreation Center located at 3030 G Street Southeast in Ward 7, just east of the Anacostia River. The total project budget is $37 million, but we're also looking for sponsors and partners to join us with this project. DGS, on behalf of DPR, will be issuing an RFP for Architectural Services May of 2018. The design team will work with DPR and the community to design a state-of-the-art therapeutic recreation facility that will include an indoor pool with hydrotherapy, sensory stimulation, and meditation rooms, multi-purpose rooms for adaptive programming, a gymnasium, demonstration kitchen, and interior spaces specific to therapeutic offerings. There is also a 7.5 acre site along with this project that will also include a, an accessible and inclusive playground, sensory garden, adaptive outdoor fitness equipment, and outdoor amenities conducive to creating the premier therapeutic recreation wellness campus in the mid-Atlantic. I thank you again for your attendance this morning and for your interest in improving the District of Columbia. As we continue, please help me welcome Ms. Greer Gillis, Director of the Department of General Services. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Mayor, Deputy Mayor Kinner, and my colleagues from the participating district government agencies here this morning to participate in the fourth annual March Madness Forum hosted by DEMPED. I am Greer Johnson Gillis, the Director of the Department of General Services. To all of you attending the forum today, I welcome you. You are in the right place to learn about the new projects on the horizon at DGS and how you can become involved in the solicitation opportunities that will help to grow your business and be a part of a thriving DC. DGS is the construction arm for the District of Columbia. It is our mission to provide superior construction, first rate maintenance, and expert real estate management for the city to the point of elevating the quality of life for people who live and work in our nation's capital. So as head of DGS, it gives my staff and me a sense of fulfillment to be able to actively serve a role in Mayor Bowser's continued priority and commitment of creating pathways to the middle class through the programs that we have. And one that continues to grow is our launch pad. Last year, at the, 
March Madness Forum, I introduced the DGS Launchpad Initiative to literally help connect local certified business enterprises to contract opportunities for innovative projects directly tied to citywide development. Here is our success story. Since the Launchpad Initiative began, DGS has held nine competitions with local businesses. Contracts of up to $100,000 have been awarded to those companies with strong business pitches. I am pleased to report that five of these CBEs were awarded their first prime contract with DGS through the launch pad. All totaled, yes, thank you. All totaled, that's just under $500,000 in project contracts since this vibrant program started. But there's more to come. These projects are meaningful. For example, our most recently awarded contract, the contractors will be working on a historic preservation and restoration of the beautiful Eastern Market on Capitol Hill. Our next launch pad will be April 25th. If you're interested in registering, and I encourage you to do so, please go to our website, dgs.dc.gov, to register to participate in our next launch pad event. But also at today's March Madness Forum, you can learn more at our exhibit table about how DGS is reaching out to our CBE community, including details about our recent CBE Opportunity Procurement Forum. At our Procurement Forum, we highlighted 70 procurements totaling between $75 million and $100 million. Procurement opportunities remain in fiscal year 18 that touched the special initiatives of Mayor Bowser, including the city's short-term family housing projects and the district's sustainability, energy, and recycling initiatives. A few moments ago, you heard Mayor Bowser speak on the opening of the DC Infrastructure Academy in Ward 8. It is a Department of Employment Services initiative, and DGS was right there overseeing the work. We are proud to have delivered this exceptional training space to help elevate our local business community. Eight CBE companies worked to renovate approximately 1,700 square feet of interior space at the DCIA site in Anacostia. For DGS, this is a real partnership that makes a difference for local businesses and for the people who live and work in the district. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, for your vision to give local companies a chance and the opportunities for district residents to thrive. So to all of you, I hope you take advantage of this opportunity here today, the opportunity that's provided at this fourth annual March Madness Forum. And we at DGS look forward to working with all of you. Now, I will turn the podium over to Jonathan Butler, the Chief Business Officer with the DC Public Libraries. Thank you. Thank you, Director Gillis, and thank you, Madam Mayor and Deputy Mayor Kenner, for this outstanding event and for DC Public Library to have an opportunity to participate. Good morning, all. Great. My name is Jonathan Butler. I'm the Chief Business Officer for DC Public Library. DCPL is responsible for operating, maintaining, and building libraries throughout the nation's capital. Since 2009 to date, we have delivered 18 newly constructed or renovated libraries, uh, totaling nearly, nearly $200 million in total development spending to date. So we've been busy at DCPL. Thank you. At the moment, three additional libraries are under some form of construction or renovation. Currently, opportunities are on the horizon for the following libraries. First, Lamont Riggs. This is a parcel and structure located in Ward 5 on South Dakota Avenue, northeast near the intersection of Riggs Road. We intend to demolish the existing structure and design and construct a new 20,000 square feet state-of-the-art library. The RFP is currently out on our website for design build services. That would be dclibrary.org. The RFP was issued on March 6th and it closes on April the 2nd. 
The budget for this project is $20 million. The second project, which is the Southeast Library, this is a parcel and structure located in Ward 6 at 7th Street and South Carolina Avenue Southeast. It's a landmark building, so we can't raise it and rebuild it, but we will completely modernize and expand this particular building. Uh, the library right now is approximately 9,600 square feet with the expectation of considerable expansion. We will issue an RFP for design build services in spring 2019. The budget for this project is $23.5 million. The third project, which is underway, but I want to talk a little bit about it because there are opportunities on the construction subcontract trade opportunities. This parcel in structure is located in Ward 6 at Wesley Place and I Street Southwest. The project is currently under the design phase. I believe we're in design development, and DCPO will begin construction for a new 20,000 square feet library in the fall of this year. There will be opportunities for subcontract construction trades in a variety of areas, uh, including drywall, glass, concrete, fixtures, lighting, etc. This is a rendering of what the new Southwest will look like. Uh, we're excited about it. Uh, we're going to expand the footprint of it. The estimated construction budget for this project is $15 million. As I mentioned, the project is already in the design phase. The last project is, I'm excited about it because it actually encompasses all of our libraries and is something I think is a bit long overdue. Uh, this exciting project is the Library Facilities Master Plan. This will impact libraries in all eight wards. We seek to develop a 10-year library facility master plan that comprehensively assesses the state of current facilities and the need for future investments in our library infrastructure. There are a total of 26 libraries within our portfolio. 22 of them are standalone. The master plan process is extensive. It's involved for those who've ever been through it. Uh, for us, the, pr the process will include a comprehensive citywide stakeholder engagement effort. It will assess neighborhood population growth and demographic trends for now and the next 10 years. It will identify long-term funding needs and financing options for future libraries along with the potential for public-private partnerships. And ultimately, it will deliver a 10-year roadmap for how we prioritize improvements, repairs, and investment in our library facilities. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss a few of our exciting projects. At the moment, I will invite Deputy Mayor Kenna to come back and close out the program. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, how's everybody feeling still? Good, fabulous. Uh, I'm glad to see so many people are still here. We, we, um, uh, not only, uh, hopefully, do we have some projects of interest for people, uh, but we were very efficient. It is about noon uh, here um, for our program. Um, so as you have sort of heard today, we have 10 plus projects uh, that the city is putting out. We have opportunities as it relates to the South Capitol Street Bridge, great projects with uh, libraries, park and rec, as well as some redevelopment opportunities and the deputy mayor's uh, portfolio as well. Um, you know, many of these uh, opportunities that we have are not just limited to uh, development or construction opportunities. Uh, within the deputy mayor's uh, portfolio, we also have a business development group that does things around opportunity zones, uh, our neighborhood prosperity fund, which is a new fund that we put out to be able to help um, projects that are located in census tracts that have greater than 10% unemployment really get some of those needed retail, office, and parking needs uh, that they have, as well as our Great Streets program, uh, which has been around for many years but has really been accelerated in the last few, helping to catalyze important small business operations on many of our retail corridors uh, in the District of Columbia. Um, Today, hopefully, you heard some things that were helpful to you. Uh, we've got still some folks uh, that are located at our tables that can tell you additional information uh, about many of the projects that you all heard today. Uh, we are looking forward to hopefully being back uh, for a fifth March Madness next year. 
venue TBD, so we will give you some more information about that. But we thank you all very much for coming out today and look forward to seeing you all on our projects very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>